Hello everyone, this is Deacon Steve Greco back again with Empowered by the Spirit. And we're so excited to, to be here and to talk to you about an incredibly important subject, and that is the gift of miracles. The title of this show is Expect and Experience Miracles, and we're thrilled to have with us my lovely wife, Marianne Greco, who will help us better understand miracles and better understand the scripture. We also have with us Katie Hughes that will give us her thoughts on this very important subject. Now the question is, what is a miracle? Well, let's turn to our catechism, our Catholic catechism, and take a look at the actual definition. A miracle is a sign or wonder, such as a healing or the control of nature, which can only be attributed to divine power. But let's also take a look at the Catholic Encyclopedia. The Catholic Encyclopedia defines miracle similar but slightly different. In a sense, it says wonders performed by supernatural power as signs of some special mission or gift and explicitly ascribed to God. So this is a wonder, and that wonder is something that usually is above and beyond nature. It's above and beyond the natural, but it's really God's intervention into our life in which it really directs specifically that God is showing us how much he loves us, how much he cares for us, how much we are his children. You know, one of the things that Jesus told us, Marianne, is in John 14, 12 to 14, he starts out by saying, Amen, Amen. I say to you, whoever believes in me will do the works I do and will do greater ones than these because I'm going to the Father. And whatever you ask in my name, I will do so, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask anything of me in my name, I will do it. Well, first, Marianne, I know you teach four different Bible studies. Amen, amen appears occasionally in Scripture that Jesus tells his disciples, amen, amen. What's that, what does that mean and what is, why is that important to our audience? Well, when we see the words amen, amen repeated, it is saying and it's a cue to the listeners to listen up. He's saying, listen up, this is really important. The point I'm making that comes next is something you need to really stop and pay attention and listen to this. So Katie, this is incredibly important. It's incredibly important that we understand that we will do what Jesus did. And question people say, well, how is that really possible to do what Jesus did? Jesus raised the dead. Jesus walked on water. Jesus healed the sick. But what does this really mean to us that we have the power of the Holy Spirit within us that we can do miracles when we turn to God and let God be God? Well, we're able to invoke you know, the Jesus and his, his power and we're able to use it in his name and anything's possible with God. So if he's giving us that grace to, um, to be the, the embodiment of some type of miracle or help with a miracle, um, to pray for miracles, he can use us in that way. Yeah, and that is exactly right. He can use us in that way. And he basically gives us in 1 Corinthians 12, 10, he says that the gift of miracles is a gift of the charismatic gift of the Holy Spirit. You know, Jesus said, and, and I want everyone to picture this, Jesus is ready to ascend into heaven. He's appeared to all the disciples. He's giving the marching orders to the disciples. And he says a number of different things. He says, first of all, in Acts 1.8, you will receive power, which is translated as dynamite in the Greek word, when the Holy Spirit comes upon you and you will be my witnesses to the ends of the earth. Marianne, what's it mean to have a power tool versus a regular tool? What's it mean when Jesus said we'll have power? Well, the regular tool might be if you want to compare it to using a regular screwdriver to put a screw into something. 
and it works. It takes a while and it takes a, a lot of effort and power. But when we use an electric drill to put that screw into the place, we get a lot more power and it happens more efficiently. So when Jesus gives us these charisms, these power tools, we are able to tap into his Holy Spirit and use that power more efficiently for our prayers and for our being instruments of the Lord. I think one of the most important reasons why we're doing this radio show is for everyone to understand that we have not been left orphans, that we have been given this power. And, and um, you know, it's so important. First Corinthians 3.20, St. Paul tells us that our scripture, our, our gospel is not a question of talk, but one of power. And that power, we are to use that to proclaim God's gospel, to proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ. Mark 16, 15, 18, we are given this commandment, this great commission, to go into the whole world and proclaim the gospel to every creature. Now, this is so important to understand. This again, Jesus is giving his marching orders to the disciples and to all of us. And he's saying that there are certain signs that will accompany those who believe. Katie, do you believe? I do. Marianne, do you believe? Absolutely. Michael, do you believe? Oh, I wait. Do. Oh, Michael does. Our engineer spoke for the first time. I want everyone <laughs> to make sure that you get a copy of this one. Michael Amo, our engineer, he believes, we all believe. Do you believe out there? I mean, it sounds basic, but it isn't. It isn't basic. We have to say, yes, we believe with all of our heart. And when that happens, there's certain signs that will accompany, accompany those who believe. They'll drive out demons. Some of you right now are under depression. You are under feeling just shame. You're under pornography in which you have an addiction to pornography or addiction to drugs or addiction to alcohol. Some of you have problems as it relates to sinful, uh, a sinful pattern. And some of that is influenced by the evil, evil spirits. Some of that is your own will. But in any case, the Holy Spirit can cleanse you through the name of Jesus Christ. They will speak new languages. They will speak in tongues. They'll pick up ser serpents and, any de and drink any deadly thing. And as you remember from scripture, Paul picked up a snake that bit him. And what happened, Marianne? Did Paul die? No. No. See, what a great response. No, absolutely. And yet that is considered one of the miracles. They'll lay hands on the sick and they will recover. Incredible. How can we live, Katie, a life of abundance? John 10.10, 10, I came so they might have life and, and have it more abundantly unless we experience the power of the Lord. That that is essential in terms of what is really normal Christian living, wouldn't you say? I would. Well, she, we, we've gotten some great responses here today, folks. I feel like he's given us this gift and we haven't opened it yet. So often we, we realize it's like he gives us this present and we sit it on the shelf and we don't use it. And Jesus is saying, I've given you this gift of the Holy Spirit. Now take this gift, receive it, open it up and use it. Amen, amen. I'll say amen, amen. That's exactly right. We receive the gift of the Holy Spirit, the gift of the charismatic gifts of, of his love, his power, the gift of miracles again, a miracle is a sign or wonder. It is Jesus working in our lives in a very supernatural way. So how do we get the gift of miracles? How does that happen? Well, first of all, I want to cover four different points that will help us in terms of getting this gift. First, we must surrender to Christ completely. We must be his ambassador. 2 Corinthians 6.20. So we are ambassadors for Christ as if God were appealing through us, we are to be reconciled to God and to be ambassadors. Unless we're saying that yes and opening up the present 
unless we're saying yes to him and we're basically saying, Lord, take over my life, then I feel it's extremely difficult to have God's power and love flow through us in which we're being used as an instrument of his miracles. What do you think, Katie? In terms of, of really, ex we have to surrender our lives over to God in order to experience his power. It's true, you, you do need to surrender in order for him to work through you, um, to trust him and believe. He needs that faith from you for miracles to happen. The and, other thing I, I think, Steve, is sometimes we, we don't surrender because we're trying to do it our way. And so until we surrender, we're, we're trying to fix things our way. But part of the surrendering is saying, your will, God, your way. And then he can come in and work on whatever the situation is. But as long as we're still holding on and trying to do it our way, he can't, he can't work. We're blocking him in a sense. That's so true. And, and, you know, at the end of the day, we have to be like that little child. We have to be like that child that basically says, Lord, I can't do it, but you can. I don't have the power, but you do. And that really means faith, which is the second point here on how you get the gift of miracles. You must ask for faith. In, in Ephesians 2, 8, 9, we learn that faith is a gift but we have to ask for that gift. And we get asked for that gift through Luke eleven thirteen, in which we learn how much God wants to give us the gift of the Holy Spirit. He tells us in that 11th chapter of Luke that we who know how to give good gifts to our children, how much more does God, our Father, know how to give us the Holy Spirit? And when we get the Holy Spirit, when we're empowered by the Spirit, the Holy Spirit gives us that faith. Then, 2 Corinthians 5, 7, we walk by faith and not by sight. Matthew 17, 20, if our faith is the size of the mustard seed, you could say to this mountain, move from here to there and it will move and nothing will be impossible for you. And I'm saying to you right now, there's a reason you're listening in. There is a reason that you are listening in because God is healing right now spiritual blindness and actually a physical blindness is being healed right now in the name of Jesus Christ. I see a breast cancer being healed in the name of Jesus Christ, a prostate cancer, several of them being healed in the name of Jesus Christ. You see, when we have faith as big as a mustard seed, we can expect God to be God and God loves us so much that he wants to heal us spiritually, mentally, emotionally, physically, Mark eleven twenty four says, Therefore I tell you that whatever you ask for in prayer, believe and have faith that you will receive it and it will be yours. You have to believe it. You have to have faith. I've mentioned this perhaps before and you'll probably hear it again, but it's one of my favorite scriptures in Matthew, in, in Matthew 9 when two blind men are approaching Jesus and they're asking to be healed. And Jesus said, do you believe I can do so? And they said, yes, Lord. And they said, to the extent that you believe is the extent that you are healed. You see, we have to believe in miracles. We have to believe that God is ready to intervene in our life. We have to accept the fact that Jesus, as it says in Hebrews 13, 8, is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And if Jesus healed, if Jesus healed us completely in the past, why would he not heal us today? The third point is we should have and must have fervent prayer. The fervent prayer is James 5.18 of a righteous person is very powerful. We need to pray in the spirit. We need to pray our rosary and ask the Blessed Mother to intervene. We've seen so many miracles in which praying the rosary we see re restoration of marriages, restoration of physical conditions, restoration of families. We need to pray in prayer groups. Another important point of prayer and fervent prayer that really leads to miracles is praying with spouses. Marianne, I think when a husband and wife pray together, there's amazing miracles that happen and we've seen that in our own family. Absolutely. Although I'll have to say, 
when you first start trying to pray together as a couple, it's difficult. You would think, oh, why? We're, we're a couple. But for some reason, it's, it's difficult. It seems difficult to do. But I really encourage you listeners to keep going because as you do it more and more, you'll be more comfortable with it. But when Steve and I pray together, there's so much power. We're, we're a couple, we're a sacrament that God has blessed and we have that power to use. The love between us will flow out through us and, and the Lord will be with us. So I encourage everyone to keep trying, even though it seems awkward at first or maybe a little bit uncomfortable. In our healing ministry, and we certainly see this all the time, and Katie, you're one of our leaders in terms of the prayer ministry at Spirit-Filled Hearts and the healing ministry. When we have a husband and wife together, uh, I know you do like I do, and you have them hold hands, and we pray over them, and and, and actually you, you feel the love of God flowing through them. They are, they're, they're one. God has united them, and... Um... They aren't to be separated, and so when when they pray together, and they're they're holding hands, and you can place your hand over theirs, it's just a um, it's such a wonderful concrete experience to feel that love between a married couple that truly love each other, love their family, and um, they have you know their life isn't easy being married, and there's struggles with their children, um, or even between the two of them, maybe it's patience for with each other or um, financial difficulties. But when they're there together, that's a big statement. Um, not every couple comes together to the prayer meeting. So it's encouraging to see a united bond. So fervent prayer is a foundation to asking God for, for his love flowing through us and to believe it. But the fourth point is that reality of asking. Matthew 7, 7 and 8. You've heard this before, but I'm going to ask that you let it flow into your heart. The longest journey in the world is the journey from the head to the heart. Ask and it will be given you. Now, I didn't write this. It doesn't say ask and maybe it will be given to you. It says, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. I don't know about you, but one of the most important scriptures to me is in the Beatitudes, where it says, blessed are they who hunger and search or seek for righteousness or God's will, for they will be filled, they will be satisfied. You have to seek it. You have to seek it with all your heart. I want you to listen out there. Listen carefully. You were chosen to listen to this. You were chosen to listen to this. John 15, 16. It's not you who chose me, but I who chose you and anointed you to bear fruit, fruit that will remain so that whatever you ask in, in my name, it will be given to you. You have been chosen to listen to this. You have been chosen to seek God with all your heart, all your soul, all your might. You can experience God's love in the way that he wants you to unless you empty your heart to him, unless you seek him with all your heart, soul, might, and strength. That's why it says you must love God with all your heart, soul, might, and strength. This is the greatest commandment. Knock and the door will be open to you. Jesus is at the door knocking. We see that throughout scripture. Everyone who wants to receive the power of the Holy Spirit will get that power. Would Jesus deny anybody the power of the Holy Spirit, Marianne? No, it, it's funny though. I think that it, we find it difficult sometimes to ask the Lord for that Holy Spirit or for that gift. And yet he says, as you mentioned in scripture before, Steve, is he, he says, I, I am giving you this power. And yet we feel, sometimes I think we feel, oh, I'm not worthy or I'm not going to bother him with this. I, I find a lot of people expressing that, but we have to realize he's given it to us and he's given them us these gifts so we may build his kingdom so it's almost like a responsibility that we need to ask for it and not not 
step back and say, oh no, I can't bother or ask him for it. But be bold and, and ask him. He loves us that much. He wants to give us a gift. It's like a parent who gives, when you give your child a gift, how much joy do you get when they open up that gift and start using it? That's what God is waiting for us to open up our gifts and start using them. I'm really glad you said that, Marianne, because at the end of the day, it really leads me back to Romans 8, one of the most important chapters. And I know you'll, you'll hear me say that a lot. <laughs> and you'll hear me say, these are my favorite scriptures. And I have 10,000 favorite scriptures, but these are my favorite. All right. Um, Romans 8, 14. For those who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. If you let the Holy Spirit, if you're empowered by the Spirit, you're children of God. And you're a child of God. And if you're a child of God, what do you get? You get freedom. You don't get a spirit of slavery, as it says in verse 15. Again, Romans chapter 8. But no, we can then cry, Abba, Father, our Father. Katie, is it exciting knowing that you have a Father who loves you so dearly? I do. It's, uh, it is freeing to know that He loves you no matter what. And and he's calling us to follow him and that's the responsibility his you know he gives us his love and he does he wants us to rise to love others as he loves us and um, through us he works his miracles and gives us all the gifts that we need to um, serve him and that's you know part of what we're here for is serving him and loving all of his children Verse 16 says, the Spirit bears witness with our spirit that we're children of God. The Spirit leads us to that. Verse 17 says, and if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. Joint heirs with Christ. And yes, we may have to suffer with him a while, but we will be glorified in him. Now, further in chapter 8, and Marianne, you were certainly referencing this that we realize how much God loves us. For I'm convinced in, in verse 38, neither death nor life, nor angels nor principalities, nor present things, present problems that you have, present difficulties financially, present difficulties with marriage, present difficulties with problems in school, present difficulties with problems in relationships, nor future things. People worry about the future. What's going to happen? Jesus is in the future. Jesus is there open arms for you. Nor powers, nor depth, nor height, nor any other thing will separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. You know, Katie, when we accept Jesus as our Lord and Savior, that becomes a door opener for his love and his miracles to flow through us. Yes, he. When we're open and and welcoming his love, uh, he can use us. Um, and like Marianne said earlier, it's a responsibility we have. And sometimes people are afraid of that. They have to change. They have to grow. Um, there is a responsibility with this gift of love. James four two says, "You do not possess because you do not ask." And the thing that's interesting, Marianne, is the fact that, at least I see all the time, that people are afraid to ask. They, they, they somehow think they don't deserve it, or they think that, well, God isn't really interested in my problems, or God really won't listen to me. Or, I mean, isn't it so important that we just get from our heart and ask Abba, our Father, you know, what our needs are, and, and just let Him shower His love on us. And you actually had a... Uh, a, an important uh, vision in a sense or dream I can't remember was a vision or dream about an umbrella and uh, tell us about oh, that. It, it was more or less a vision I was praying and God gave me this vision and it was he was saying to me I was like I want all your blessings and he was saying I'm blessing you all the time in fact my blessings are like rain and you're you're in the rain and you're holding up an umbrella and you're avoiding my blessings by holding up your umbrella he said to me 
And he says, so I want you to put down your umbrella and stand out in the rain and let my blessings come upon you. And he said, in fact, you know, life is messy. Sometimes life is messy, but if we get wet and, and let the blessings come, come upon us, then we get all the blessings he has for us. In fact, he said, even more than just letting the blessings soak into you, turn your umbrella upside down and collect the blessings because I have so many blessings for you. And yet we're all running around trying to dodge them, it seems like. It is an interesting vision of turning an umbrella upside down to capture. It's almost like you know you have an arid area and they try and, and capture rainwater, right? And they, they put buckets or they put a big area in which they try to, to save that rainwater. It's like save the blessings. The blessings are just pouring down upon us. So as we look at this again, you know, you've got to surrender your hearts to Jesus. This is the time, ladies and gentlemen, and everyone out there, the men, women, children, Jesus is asking you right now, this is the time to surrender your heart to him. Surrender totally. Then ask for faith. Faith is a gift. Our Father will give us that faith. Faith to move mountains. Faith to have miracles in your life. Then pray fervently, which means pray with all your heart, soul, might, and strength. And finally, make sure again that you receive the faith and ask for God to act in the way that God can act, which is basically pouring out his love upon you, allowing the power of the Holy Spirit to fill you. Well, we certainly hope you've been enjoying this show. Uh, the Sower Ministry is a fantastic ministry, and we are in conjunction with the Sower Ministry at Spiritful Hearts. Three, this is a very exciting two, opportunity we have on this show. Hello, Empowered everyone. This is Deacon Steve Greco. To really communicate We're back with God's Empowered love to you. Empowered by the Spirit. Power to you. Focusing on the you can gift of miracles. You can miracles by email at In the first half of the show, we talked about the importance of surrendering That's our hearts, our souls, our mind to Jesus. We would like very to much ask to ask for faith. You. To hear to what you're learning, that God will give us miracles. that increased faith, faith that will move we get mountains. miracle stories to pray all fervently, the time pray with a about partner, how pray God's with your spouse, love, pray in a prayer God's group, healing, God's, pray for God's, God's love, grace God's is just miracles, flowing God's through people, healings and it's one of the most you. exciting and things ask, that ask we possibly can believe experience. That God will give you Heavenly Father, the strength, we ask for the power the of the Holy Spirit to and flow yes, the upon miracles to everyone be able listening to in. Solve that they issues may receive your that love, your grace, your miracles, your ability to, to live life and life abundantly. In their family. Now, their there work, are seven categories of miracles healings, that we'll be the focusing things on. that you have in store for them. In the, the first name category of Jesus, we pray, is a spiritual miracle. We will be coming back to go now, through if you think seven about it, categories all of miracles. All of you perhaps have had all your some friends, type of spiritual miracle. Get them on miracle. the phone. Get them listening but in. some of us, because more this is going to be incredibly important in your life. As we look at scripture, Thank we look you at and Acts God chapter 9. And we see Paul, who was called Saul at the time, who were persecuting Christians. His eyes were blinded. His eyes were blinded spiritually. They became blinded physically. And Jesus came to him and said, why are you persecuting me? And we all know what happened then. He was thrown from the horse. He could not see. And he neither ate nor drank for that period of time. But when he became healed, he became Paul. He became the great saint, the great evangelist. Well, we see these kinds of spiritual miracles in various people in our own lives. I mean, for me, God came to me in a way that I didn't expect. He came to me through a friend. And through that friend, I realized that I had to turn my heart to Jesus Christ. We see in Mark 2.5, the healing of the paralytic. When Jesus saw the faith of the people lowering him through the, the roof, he said, your sins are forgiven. We see it as it relates to the thief, the good thief on the cross. What a miracle that was. Here he is being crucified 
And he said, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus said, today you'll be with me in paradise. We see spiritual miracles every mass that we attend. When we receive the body and blood of Jesus Christ, that bread, that wine, that are turned into his body and blood. And we see great miracles that happen when people receive the body and blood of Jesus and truly believe, believe in God's healing, believe in God's miracles. I've seen healings of cancer when someone receives the Eucharist and truly believes. So spiritual miracles are something that we often take for granted the healing of our sins through reconciliation. These are all very important. Marianne, without a doubt, Jesus wants to heal us spiritually, that that often is where everything starts in terms of our life being transformed into a miracle. I think being healed spiritually is probably the most important miracle we can see because that's what it's all about. It's that we can. It's at that point where you're healed and you feel the presence of Jesus and that closeness of Jesus. So it's that that life-changing experience, as it was for Paul, that can completely turn us around and change everything that we've been doing to go the other way. As Paul was persecuting the Christians, now he has changed and he is going to spread the good news of Jesus Christ to all of Europe and, and God is leading him around. So he's taken his gift and turned it completely around for a spiritual healing. For everyone out there right now, I want you to open up your hearts to Jesus and repeat these words after me. Heavenly Father, I give you my heart. I give you my soul. I give you my life. I give you my mind. I give you my fears. I give you my hopes. I give you my depression. I give you all of me. Thank you for healing me. Thank you for forgiving my sins. Thank you for forgiving me through the power of the Holy Spirit. Create in me a new creation. Do whatever you want with me, for I am your servant. I am your child. We say this in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Amen. If you prayed that prayer from your heart, your life will change. That's the greatest miracle of all. The greatest miracle of all, Katie, is that when we give our heart to Jesus, how he takes over our life. And it's like seeing things in color versus seeing things in black and white. Our, in fact, we talk about, and, and we see this in Corinthians, where a veil is removed. Our life becomes changed when we turn our hearts to Jesus. I can think back to um, a reconciliation I went to. I went, and it had been a while since I had gone. And after really, really going over all of my sins and reflecting upon it and talking to the priests about everything and, and being absolved of those sins, when I walked out of that church and just everything was brighter, the, even the leaves were shining and brighter green than ever before. And, and I just, I, at that point, was praising God for the beauty and the miracle of, you know, for that for that moment of surrendering and um, the miracle of forgiveness. Praise God. Without that, you wouldn't be sitting here right now. Nope. <laughs> the second category for miracles that we want to focus on is what I'm calling environmental. Jesus uses miracles all the time around us. We see this in Scripture, where in Luke 8, 22 to 25, he stilled the sea. We see in Matthew 8, 26, he rebuked the wind. We see the fact that Jesus in, in Matthew 14, 22 to 36, walked on water. And this was very important to me when we had a fire all around us in Glendale. 
and I've said this story before in, in other shows, but it was very important for me to realize that Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever, and to rebuke the wind, which happened, and the fire burned out. It happened in, in Mexico when we didn't have paint, and we added water, and that paint, all of a sudden, or that water became paint. It was unbelievable to me. It became thick paint. You see, because God does miracles. But Marianne, one of the things that I want to focus on is the story of the dolphins. <laughs> she doesn't particularly think this is as cool as I do. But we were riding our bikes on the beach and uh, boardwalk. And Marianne, who's always cheerful, always smiling, always full of, of so much love and joy, wasn't having a great day. And in fact, to the point where, you know, I just, I would get praying. I said, Lord, I don't know what's going on here, but can you show how much you love, show her how much she's loved? So there was a, a part, and this is down Newport Beach, there was a part of a, a like a school, actually, it was right there on the beach. And there's a cement a playground, and you get pretty close to the water. And so we, we had we were riding our bikes and we went out there and occasionally it doesn't happen too often but occasionally you see dolphins that are close to the shore and they jump in out of the water and it's an amazing and i know when marianne sees them she get and i see them or anybody sees them they get really excited so i prayed fervently for dolphins to appear and we stood there and Marianne said, well, why are we waiting here? I said, well, just let's just wait another minute or two. And nothing, and nothing, and nothing. I said, and I kept praying to the Holy Spirit in I the name of Jesus. I wasn't in the right mind to, to be looking for that miracle, I guess. It, yeah, that point. exactly. And, and, and then all of a sudden I saw a speck in the distance. And that speck became closer and closer and closer. And all of a sudden we saw what I'm calling five dolphins, but Marianne, how many dolphins do you think it was? Oh, maybe two, maybe three. Well, okay, I, we're up to three. Yeah. That's not bad. <laughs> but they were so close to the shore, and they started jumping one after another, and that was God's gift to you. God brought those dolphins at that moment in time to you. But I think one of the things is, because I was in a down uh, moment, <laughs> I wasn't really looking for God's miracle, but took Steve, another person, to to show me the way, to show me God's miracle. Sometimes it takes others to help us see. So I was so excited to see this, and behind us was this busy boardwalk, and there were bikers and walkers and joggers and skateboarders, and everyone was looking, of course, straight ahead. And all these dolphins were jumping, and it was so yeah. beautiful, it was late in the day. And I remember asking the Lord, why can't they see this miracle? Why are they not looking? And I felt God saying to me, because they're not focused on me. They're not looking for a miracle at that moment in time. They were focused on themselves or doing their own thing, not focusing on the Lord. And I have to say, I was probably focusing on my sadness it was getting me down and it took Steve to help remind me to focus on the Lord before I could see the miracle of the dolphins. The important story is that when you expect miracles, and I was expecting a miracle of the dolphins, when you expect miracles, then God wants to give us our miracles. Maybe it doesn't happen the way that we want it to. Maybe it doesn't happen exactly every time that we pray, but God will give us some comfort some grace. I think the exciting part about this story too is to know that we can, if other people in our life maybe aren't in the position or ready to see the miracle or expect the miracle, that we as firm believers can step in for them, in a sense, expect that miracle and point them towards it and point them towards God. That's exciting. Amen. 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 The third category of miracles is what I call physical or physical healing. James 5, 14 and 15, if anyone is sick, they should summon the presbyters of the church and they will pray over him and anoint him with oil in the name of the Lord. 
and the prayer of faith will save the sick person, the Lord will raise him up. We've seen incredible cancers healed. We've seen people that have been blind. In one particular case for me, it was someone who was blind for the last 30 years in one eye, and God healed her. We've seen cardiac conditions normalized. We've seen paralysis in which they couldn't get out of bed, and through the power of Jesus, they began walking. You've heard the story in previous shows about Marianne's arthritis being miraculously healed. Physical healing, Katie, is something that happens on a daily basis when we believe and we expect God to act. Sure. I mean, the Lord wants to heal us, and um, with our faith and our belief that He can do that, He has that power. And if we trust Him and pray, in Jesus' name and ask for that healing, that physical healing. Whether you're standing in for someone and praying for your aunt or you're praying for your own physical healing, um, God can do anything and uh, sometimes it doesn't always happen the way you expect it. But um, it takes time or maybe it's instantaneous. Um, he knows what's best for us and how His miracle will, will work. Katie was referring to a few weeks ago in our prayer meeting, a woman stood in for her aunt that had a brain aneurysm in critical condition. We prayed over her in the name of Jesus. Her aunt was healed within 24 hours and released from the hospital. And those are the kind of miracles we see all the time because God loves us. Jesus loves us. He loves us. He's given us his power, his Holy Spirit. The fourth category of miracle is what I call emotional. Now this is something that happens in which God will come to you and let you know how much you're loved. It happened to me at SCRC, which by the way is coming up uh, over Labor Day weekend, their, their big convention in Anaheim Convention Center, in which I was there and I wasn't feeling very good about myself. Uh, this was many, many years ago. And the Lord was saying, was playing me a song about you are near. Yahweh, you know you are near. And many of us know that song or have heard it. And suddenly, my past was being flashed before my very eyes, where I saw myself feeding the poor, being an evangelist to those who needed to hear the gospel of the Lord, loving people. And one after another, God showed me his love. And God said to me, this is how I see you. I needed emotional healing at that time. Well, there's another situation that happened, Marianne, that you were part of and I was part of when we were at the beach again. And there was a woman who um, all of a sudden looked kind of frantic. There was a bunch of volleyball players. And it was a young adult. And all of a sudden, she broke away and started looking for something. And... Uh, you said, what did you say? Oh, that's, well, we were sitting there and I poked at Steve and I said, you need to go over and help that woman find whatever she's looking for. And of course I said, I'm comfy and I don't want to go. So <laughs> and, I kept poking. And you kept poking. And the woman actually got two friends to help her and they were obviously looking for something that she'd lost. And then she got another two friends and before you know it, there's like six of them and they're walking up and down and walking up and down. And I kept saying, Steve, you need to get up and go help her. The wind beneath my sails. <laughs> <laughs> and I really didn't feel like getting up, but then the Lord took over and the Lord said, she has lost something and I am going to show her how much I love her. That is the reason why she's misplaced what she's misplaced. So I got up, I walked out to her, and she was distraught. And I said, I just couldn't help noticing that over the last 20, 25 minutes, you've been walking up and down and trying to find something. What happened? She said, I lost the watch my mother gave me, and it means so much to me. And she said, it must be somewhere over here. And she pointed a distance away where other people were looking about maybe 40 yards away from where we were standing. And and then she turned and, and left. And 
the Lord said to me, no, it's not there and pointed me in another direction. I literally moved five feet, Katie, five feet. I moved five feet and it was like a nativity scene. I saw a beam of light hitting this watch, literally. I know Marianne's laughing at me. I didn't see the beam of light. All right, I, I saw a beam of light because it was on top of the sand. And I said to myself, how could these people be looking for 25 minutes and they couldn't see it. And I saw it was like right in front of me. You know, I literally, there wasn't even a speck of sand on it. It was laying right on top of the sand. So I picked it up. I walked over to her. And I said, Jesus has something that he wants to say to you. Jesus told me when I was sitting there that you misplace your watch because he wanted you to know how much you are loved. I opened my hand up. The watch was there. She starts crying. She could not believe it. Literally five steps, like less than a minute, 30 seconds. She's crying and crying. She said, I can't believe this. And I said, do you go to church? And she looked at me and she said, I will now. <laughs> <laughs> you see, that's God's miracles. God's miracles of sometimes things are happening in our lives that we don't expect it, God to be acting in it, and we think it's a tragedy, but God just wants to show us how much he loves us. The fifth area is family areas where God will work miracles, and we've seen this with our children. We've seen it in our own marriage. And for you out there that are discouraged, I tell you right now, don't be discouraged because God can heal your marriage. God can heal your family. God can heal those people that have moved away and are not talking to you. Yes, that means you. The sixth area is what we call intervention. God just intervening in our life in a miraculous way. A friend of mine told me a story when he was 14 years of age. He lived by a train track and it had a trestle. It had this bridge and he walked on the bridge. And one night, it was late at night, he's walking on the bridge. And now the bridge is a very high bridge where if you jump off the bridge, you die. And he heard a voice and that voice said, look behind you. He looks behind him and sees a train like less than a minute away coming down and he did not hear the train. He, if he hadn't looked, he would have been killed. And actually there had been many accidents of people being killed on that bridge. He was able to lower himself down in time and hold on as the train went by. To this day, he, he questions, what did I hear? Who did I hear? But the reality is he heard someone say, look behind you. Well, I had another story, uh, another situation where I was in need of God's love and God's intervention. And I was at a, a business meeting and God told me to go to my room in the middle of the day, which I would normally never do in the middle of a business meeting. I went to my room and as I opened the door and, and went inside, I got a phone call and it was a friend of mine from France who actually, actually was in France, Italy, uh, France, France, uh, Paris, France is what I'm trying to say here, was in Paris, France. And in Paris, he was told by the Lord and it was like a you know, nine hour time difference. So it was late at night and he was told by the Lord to call me, to let me know that everything was okay and that I was loved. Because I just heard a tragic situation happening in my family and I was in distraught at the time and needed to have God's intervention, God's love. You see, those miracles happen all the time to us. It's God's intervention in our lives. The seventh category and final category is God's supernatural encounters. And these are things that happen at time when we least expect it, but when we need it the most. They may be a situation in which 
you may see a vision or you may see God's mercy happen around you. And for me, when I was in Paris, France, I went to see the Church of the Miraculous Medal. <clears throat> and at the Church of the Miraculous Medal, I was praying and I heard a voice saying, I'll give you the gift of poverty. And that gift of poverty was something that I would never say to myself. I'd never say, I give you a gift of poverty because that's a hard one. But I went to the back of the church. I was shaking. I turned to God. I said, can we talk about this? But I knew that I needed to turn my life over to him completely. This is before I became a deacon. I went back up to the altar and I said, I give you my entire life. You see, I had heard a voice and that voice was telling me to put God first no matter what. And that's exactly what Jesus is telling you right now. He is telling you that he is there for you, but turn your life over to him. Turn your life over to him completely. And you experience miracles, whether they be spiritual or environmental or physical or emotional or family or God's love intervening in your life or some type of spiritual encounter. You will experience his love. And that's what this show is about, is to tell you that you are loved. And you get that love when you go and see the sower ministry. On Friday evening, April 25th, there will be the weekly gathering at St. Francis of Rome Catholic Church, 501 East Foothill Boulevard in the city of Azusa from 7.30 to 9.30. And the guest speaker will be Father Samuel Ward. Now, Father Sam is Associate Director of Vocations for the Archdiocese of Los Angeles. He's in residence at Holy Family Church where, Marianne, you and I were married at Holy Family Church in Glendale, California, where we both grew up. Father Sam will be speaking on today's Catholic Church. That's Friday evening, St. Francis of Rome Catholic Church. Join us all and have your heart filled with the Holy Spirit. We at the Sower Ministry would love to pray for you. Contact us at the Sower Prayer Line, 877-71-GLORY. It's toll free, 877-714-5679. Let us know how we can pray for you. Now to learn more about the Sower Ministry, Visit our website at JesusTheSower.com. That's JesusTheSower.com. Now, this radio program is in collaboration between the Spirit-Filled Hearts Ministry and the Sower Ministry. Please visit our website at Spirit-Filled Hearts. That's SpiritFilledHearts.org. SpiritFilledHearts.org. Like us on Facebook at Facebook.com backslash SpiritFilledHearts. Follow us on Twitter at Spirit Hearts One. That's Spirit Hearts One. Now, if you like what you've heard tonight, and when we know that you have, join us next week. And next week, we'll be talking about another step in God's love and God's miracles to us. Heavenly Father, we love you and we praise you. And we ask, Lord God, for you to send forth your Holy Spirit upon everyone listening in. We ask, Lord God, for physical healing, emotional healing, spiritual healing, inner healing, healings of, mar of marriages, healings of memories. We thank you, Lord God, for sending forth your Holy Spirit as tongues of fire upon everyone listening in. We thank you, Lord God, for giving them all the gift of miracles that gift, Lord God, that you shower them with your love. You shower them with your presence. You shower them with your grace. Lord Jesus, we surrender our hearts to you that we may be open to this love. We say this through the Immaculate Heart of Mary and the intercession of the Immaculate Heart of Mary, through the intercession of the Sacred Heart of Jesus, through the power of the Holy Spirit, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus.
Amen. Do not give up. Do not give up. Do not give up. Expect and experience miracles, and you will see great miracles in your family and in your life. We love you. We love you, and we love you. Talk to you and, and talk to you next week. God bless you all. Amen.